Hi friends, so I've got what I hope will be a treat for you today. I've been meaning to do this for a while, but I just got around to it. So a friend of mine, we practiced and for a while lived at the same monastery together. He's out here in Vienna. His name is Keegan. He's the abbot of the Bodhi Dharma Zen Center out here. I've learned a lot from this guy. And so I wanted to just sit down with him and kind of compress some of the questions that I've gotten from people over time on, on Patreon and put these questions to him because he's a very knowledgeable monk. So I thought about editing this video. It's kind of long, so it's almost an hour. So I was going to cut it together and do my little thing because I've discovered how to edit and I love it and I overdo it, but I couldn't, I, a lot of times when he's kind of thinking out loud, he's leading to something interesting. And honestly, I've been, I've been turning this video around backwards and forwards, upside down and inside out. And now I've decided to just kind of minimal to no editing. So, you know, put, lay down on your pillow. This is what I do with audio books and with YouTube videos that are longer. Lay down on your pillow, put the phone by your head, zone out and just relax and listen. I think you might get something out of it. He's a really good teacher and I learned a lot from this video. So here you go. Keegan Exon from the Bodhidharma Zen Center. Hi, Keegan. <laughs> you gotta move in. Really? Yeah. Um, it's gonna be very intense talk. Why can't you pull it back a little bit? Well, because of the sound. Well, see how the sound, see how this sounds. It still sounds a little echoey in here. We're different. Okay, let's try that again. Take two. How did you get into this practice and why? Um, uh, just like everybody else, uh, a, a young person, relatively young person, dissatisfied with the way they're living their lives, looking for some way to make sense of the world and make sense of themselves. Why, why was Zen the answer? I don't know. It, uh, it, because it made perfect sense. I picked up a book one day by Alan Watts, and uh, it was just said everything that I was looking to uh, um, uh, discover. By the way, Roshi met Alan Watts, apparently. Our teacher, Roshi, met Alan Watts, and his description of him was, he smokes too much, he drinks too much, he talks too much. Yeah, I would even say that's true. <laughs> but uh, on another level, he touched a lot of people. You know, uh, he's eloquent, anyway. Yeah, okay. So. You spent how many years at the monastery? I lived there in the 90s, basically the 90s. I moved up in 1990 and left in, at the, in, in 1999. Well, you know, I could sum it up in a num from a number of different directions. I mean, you know, he always taught that what we're learning to practice, what we're learning to, to manifest is uh, a limitless compassion. And, uh, and, and that's, that's, what I, uh, that, that's what I always bring it back to, you know. Um, and that's where, and when I go closer and closer to that uh, 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 direction, uh, it makes more and more sense, everything he taught. How, does, how, how would you define limitless compassion? And then how do you put that into practice through Zen? Well, it's uh, uh, manifesting um, uh, in a way that doesn't um, uh, uh, emphasize a fixated self. So how, how do you mean by manifesting? Well, to uh, actually embody um, uh, your time, your experience, um, moment by moment, rather than um, uh, uh, intellectually projecting ideas about yourself or the world forward or backward, whatever, in order to um, uh, define and understand who you are. So how do you do that? How do you embody that principle? Well, this is what Zen practice is all That's about. That's what I'm asking you yeah. about. <laughs> well, well, it's not, you have to go step by step, you know. It, 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 Rinzai Zen, we use koans. We use, uh, you know, for, and the first koan is traditionally mu. Okay, you know. so talk about that. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's something that everybody has to uh, deal with in their own way, you know. But, uh, you know, for, for, for myself, it's, uh, it, I, I found that exercise wonderful in that, in that it gives something that's fundamentally intangible 
um, some way to begin to suss it out, some way to discover it, and then to actually enter into it. Yeah. So first you have to discover it, and then you have to enter into it. Yeah. You 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 go in, and, and you know, there's a certain form of a tradition of uh, of bowing. Um, and uh, then what you try to do is to manifest in such a way where the self is, is uh, um, uh, uh, completely unfixated. So what, do you, what, what is time when you can't stop any part of it? You can't stop it to look at it. Time. Yeah. What, 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 how is that? Uh, obviously time never stops, right? So, so how is it that you can actually experience that aspect of time rather than the, t the, the aspect that we normally do where, oh, there's a table and I understand myself as me going here or there. Uh, how do you, how, what is that part of time that doesn't ever stop? You know, there's no place you can stop it in order to take a peek at it. How do you manifest that? How do you incorporate that very real dimension of time of being into your everyday life. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question about koan practice, and I'm gonna okay because I'm dumb. Okay, that's A and B. There is no B. 